Hello and welcome to a collaborative review of the menswear manifesto, a guide created by my friend Matt over at Thrift the Life to try to make buying and reselling men's clothing a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit faster for everyone. When I had my reseller repartee with Amber from Amber Resells, she had mentioned that she had wanted to go to the thrift store and just use Matt's guide to, to pick and choose clothing to see how effective it was because she lives in Iowa. After our live, I DM'd her and asked her that if she did decide to make that video, I would love to collab on it because I do know that one of Matt's biggest pushbacks is that it's not for everything. The guide's not going to work everywhere. You know, Matt lives in San Diego and California. A lot of the brands that are in the menswear manifesto, at least the first two iterations, a lot of them were West Coast brands. And he gets a lot of pushback saying that it's not going to work for regular resellers or for resellers off of the West Coast. So I thought that it would be great with her being in Iowa and me being Virginia, that if we collabed on it, we could show that no, maybe it could be used by regular resellers. Um, she said, well, since it's Matt's thing, maybe we should also just rope Matt in as well and we'll just do it together. And I was like, you know, if we're gonna do West Coast, let's like, get a good representation of East Coast. So I asked Josh from Lot of Josh to also join us as well. He lives up in the New Jersey area. So we have Josh from Lot of Josh up in the New Jersey metro area where, you know, you have New York City and all that. And then we have Matt over on the West Coast in San Diego, where you have that metro area. You have Amber, who is in Iowa <laughs> in the Midwest. And then you have myself, which is in Virginia, so in the South. So that would be a pretty great sampling to see, okay, does the Men's Wear Manifesto work for everyone? And going forward, I'm going to be referring to the Men's Wear Manifesto as the Manifesto mostly because it's easier for me and also because I think it's catchier. So the rules for engagement for this collaboration is as follows. We have five hours to thrift. There is no limit to the number of stores that we can thrift at as long as we remain within that five hour mark. Only men's pieces that were on the list counted. So if you found a women's foot joy polo that did not count with the total number of items found and everything has to be listed by February 7th, 2022. We did this because this video is being released on March 7th. So we wanted to give everything at least a full 30 days to sell. Part of the reason why the manifesto is supposed to be successful is because it gives sell through rate. So these are supposed to be items that either have a really high dollar value or flip very quickly or have uh, inlines within that brand that sell very quickly or for a lot of money. Now, during my five hours of thrifting, I did hit five different thrift stores. I did not spend equal time in each one, but I did hit stores that were both in Williamsburg and in Newport News. And I was able to pick up a total of two full bankers boxes worth of inventory, as well as a little bit of a mountain on top. So in total, I was able to pick up 39 pieces of clothing in five hours based on the brands from the manifesto guide. Some caveats to the areas that I thrifted in, both Newport News and Williamsburg have universities within them. William & Mary is in Williamsburg. Christopher Newport University is in Newport News. Both Newport News and Williamsburg have large golf club communities as well, which you will kind of see in the brands that I was able to source. And the Williamsburg also has a large outlet as well that has Nike, uh, Adidas, and you know some of the other brands that are in the manifesto. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. I also wanna say that I did find other pieces that were brands in the manifesto, but they were women's that had just been missourced. So those will not be included. They're not in any of my haul videos because while I do have a very small community here on YouTube, I do have a very supportive community on YouTube and I didn't want my sales to be skewed for this collaboration. So now let's get into my actual results from this 30 day collaboration of the manifesto. So the brands that I was able to find out of the 330 brands that are in Matt's manifesto, I only found 24 brands. The brands that I was able to find are Adidas, AFCO, Billabong, BKE or Buckle, Columbia, Duluth Trading, Footjoy, Grunt Style, Hickey Freeman, Johnny O, 
Lacoste, Marmot, Nike, Oak Hill, Pendleton, Peter Millar, Prana, Salt Valley, Scotty Vest, Travis Matthew, Under Armour, Untuck It, Vans, and Viella. Hello, I'm going to take a moment to say yes, I do say Adidas. I do not say it the American way, which is Adidas. I worked for Adidas for four years. Adidas is named after its founder, Adolf Dossler. Growing up, his nickname was Adi, so Adi Dossler, thus Adidas. This book that I'm holding up is a history as well as guide and kind of a catalog of shoes and clothing from the brand up until 2012. This was only available to individuals that worked for Adidas in 2009. Um, if you try to buy this particular book on eBay, it goes between $150 to $200. However, if you worked for us, <laughs> if you worked for Adidas, it was free. So if you have any shoes that are pre-2010 or any clothes pre-2010 and want someone to try to authenticate it for you or to try to find out like what the name of it was or how old it is, you are more than welcome to DM me on Instagram and I will do my best to help you. So I just wanted to say that, like you can continue saying it, Adidas. I just want for whenever there's new people here to make sure I let you know I am saying it also correctly. I'm just saying it the German way or the way the rest of the world says it. But language is fluid, changes all the time. I just always have to put that caveat in there. So let's get back to the results. Out of all the brands that I was able to find, I only found four brands that had a sell-through rate, according to the manifesto, over 90%. And those were BKE Buckle, Pendleton, Salt Valley, and Scotty Vest. Out of those high sell-through brands, I sold a total of zero. <laughs> I would like to say that I did only find one of each piece, so if none of them sold within 30 days, that means that I got the zero percent. However, I have bought and sold both Buckle and Pendleton before. Pendleton sells great for me in wool pieces. Uh, <laughs> I love selling, buying and selling Pendleton wool skirts. In fact, I just did a massive vintage buyout where I bought over 100 pieces of vintage wool Pendleton skirts and suit sets. And also Buckle, I have a tendency to only buy and have success with selling their pearl snaps but I do have great success doing that. Now these particular pieces that I picked up from both Buckle and Pendleton, one was new with tags. The Pendleton piece was new with tags, but it was a regular like button front shirt, as well as the Buckle piece was a regular button front shirt. I have never found Salt Valley before, and the Salt Valley piece actually had some kind of like bleach dye on it. Somebody decided to like bleach the entire middle of it. That was a flaw. I did disclose it that that was not original to the piece, so I'm sure that that hurt it as well. And Scotty Vest has the highest sell through out of all of them, and I am actually surprised that that didn't sell. It was my first time finding Scotty Vest before, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why it's not selling. I would like to say all the pieces that I put up from the manifesto from this manifesto collaboration did get promoted on eBay, so I honestly have no idea why the Scotty Vest piece has not sold. So now let's talk about the brands that had less than 90% sell through. So the brands that had less than 90% sell through that also were a big goose egg for me were Adidas, Afco, Billabong, Hickey Freeman, Johnny O, Marmot, Oak Hill, Prana, and Vans. And this is another point where I would like to say that I have sold tons of Adidas. I have, <laughs> I have sold vintage Adidas, I have sold current Adidas, I have sold the equipment line, I have sold the originals line, I have sold the Neo line, I have sold so much Stella McCartney X Adidas collabs, I've sold Adidas Farmeria collabs, so Adidas not selling for me within 30 days is not a big deal to me. I know it'll eventually sell. Afco I've also bought and sold before as well. Now the Afco piece, again, I only found one piece. So, and this was a Guy Harvey X Afco collaboration, but it does have a giant fish on it. So I'm not quite sure why that particular piece didn't sell, other than the fact that it's a small, but I will get into sizes later. The Billabong is not something I would have picked up. I literally only picked it up for this collab and it didn't sell. 
Hickey Freeman, this is my first time finding it. Johnny O for this collaboration is my first time finding it. Marmot and Oak Hill are also my first time finding those. Although I do believe Oak Hill is a brand I've just passed on before. Uh, because it hasn't sold this time, I might continue to pass on it. <laughs> However, I did pick this piece up because it was a 4XL and also linen, and we are going into linen season very soon. Both Prana and Vans I have sold tons of. Uh, I do seem to have better luck selling women's Prana, but that's also because I have better luck finding women's Prana. Uh, Vans I am very selective with, uh, but I do pick it up and sell it if it's in decent condition and I can get it for really cheap. All right, so now let's get into the Manifesto brands that I found that had less than 90% sell through that did sell for me. So the brands that had less than 90% sell through from the Manifesto that did sell for me are Columbia, Duluth, Grunt Style, Nike, Peter Millar, and Travis Matthew. Now the Columbia, I have, my store has quite a history with buying and selling Columbia. So I think that because of the fact that I have a little bit of authority in my eBay store with Columbia, that that is why I am more successful with the Columbia sales than the manifesto suggested I should be at 67%. Duluth, uh, I rarely find Duluth. I was very surprised when I found three pieces of Duluth for this uh, collaboration. And the piece that ended up selling out of the three was a pair of shorts. Again, we are going into spring. The grunt style, uh, I've actually had success selling both men's and women's t-shirts from grunt style. You don't make a whole lot of money, but I did sell one of the two pieces that I found for this collab. Nike, also I have a little bit of authority in uh, Adidas and Nike are two brands that I pick up and I source quite frequently as well and I can find them because of the outlet stores that are in Williamsburg. As far as Peter Millar goes, I think this is the most Peter Millar I've ever found uh, in a one week span <laughs> ever and I found five pieces, one of them did sell. Uh, I believe that the rest of this will probably sell as we go into spring, so later on in March or this month, because of the fact that Peter Millar is a golf brand and all of the pieces that haven't sold are all golf polos. Uh, same thing with Travis Matthew, however, I did have a little bit better success selling Travis Matthew than the manifesto suggested I should. And now for the exciting part, the brands that, according to the manifesto, had less than a 90% sell-through rate but I had a 100% sell through rate are Footjoy, Lacoste, Under Armour, Untucket, and Viella. This again might be a little bit where I have a little bit of authority in my eBay store because all five of these brands I have picked up, I have bought and sold before. Uh, especially Under Armour and Untucket, I have bought and sold both of those quite frequently. And I, you know, I wasn't surprised that all of these brands had 100% sell through. So if those of you watching are regular viewers on my channel and also happen to watch yesterday's What Sold video, you will have remembered that I said that I buy all sizes of menswear. I do know that is a purveying theme here in the reselling community that the larger sizes sell. Well, for me, when it comes to menswear, all of it sells. It doesn't matter what size it is. I will pick up all of it extra small, small, medium, large, 4XL, I pick up all of it if it, I can get it for a good price and it's a decent brand. So I also wanted to do a breakdown of out of the 15 items that I sold of 39, what the size breakdown was because I thought that that might be helpful and also kind of to show why I pick up all the sizes. A breakdown of the sizes for the 39 pieces is I found two small, eight medium, 17 large, 3XL, 7 2XL pieces, 1 3XL, and 1 4XL. And you can see there I found the most medium and large. And that's because, to be honest, that's kind of the medium size. The whole point of the word medium is middle. Like, it's the it's medium and large are the two most common sizes you're going to come across. So if you're not picking those up, you might be missing out on sales which is if you look at my sold percent, I sold one of the two pieces of small for 50% sell through. I have 38% sell through of medium. I have 35% sell through of large, 33% sell through of extra large, 43% sell through of my 2XL. I sold the only 3XL piece I found and I did not sell that Oak Hill 4XL linen piece yet. 
And if you break it down in general, I sold 15 items out of the 39 I found. That is a 38.4% sell through rate within 30 days. I'm pretty sure most of you would just jump up and down if 38% of your store sold within 30 days. I think that this is a pretty good indication of how the manifesto works as a whole. And I think it's a good guide. Personally, I have also, outside of this collaboration, I have found some other brands that I was not familiar with. I have also purchased and sold some of the brands that I didn't have success with in this initial collaboration and then this initial five hours and 39 pieces. So I'm really happy that I got this guide. I'm really, really happy that Matt made this guide. But I do think that if you are a newer reseller or if you're a reseller who maybe sells a lot of women's and you want to learn about more men's, or if you're a reseller that sells mostly hard goods and are wanting to try to break into clothing, I do think that this is a good guide to start with. It's definitely going to make you a more informed buyer as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am of course going to be linking Matt's video, Amber's video, and Josh's video in the description down below, as well as a link to Matt's manifesto. It is a free slash pay what you want guide. So if you want it to be free and just try it out and see if it works for you too, you can. Um, or you could just throw him a couple of bucks uh, for his time because this has taken him quite a bit of time. Also, he does update it, which is really nice as well. Uh, furthermore, I realize I have never uh, introduced myself. Hello. <laughs> you can call me Bob. Uh, I am Heroin Bob, I'm pretty much on all of the internet but you can just call me Bob. That is what I will respond to. No, it is not my real name. Heroin Bob is my roller derby name, which is why I said it is what I will respond to the fastest because I got used to doing that when someone screamed Bob at me from across the track. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed your time here and I will see you guys, if I'm lucky, in tomorrow's video. Bye. Bye. Hello, if you want to see what items actually sold, like what they look like, what they were, just check out any of the last four of my What Sold videos. They're sprinkled throughout there. You can kind of figure out which ones are which based on the brands that I discussed earlier in the video. Uh, the only ones that won't be on there are the ones that sold for the first week of March. Okay, bye.